Okay. Um, okay, I'm gonna record the first 70 or so proofs of the existence of God. I had um, I had trouble with the sound. I had trouble with the sound and with the picture. Now I know how to zoom in. I had trouble with the light when light burnt out. Um, I, I wore a casual clothes. Um, now I know how to zoom in, zoom out. And the uh, volume, I think you have to put it down so it won't interfere. That was causing me the sound problem, I think. Plus, also, I have to, uh, to clean up a bit. Okay, so, but first, the question is, what is the nature of God? So, also, plus, I, I was one of the earlier proofs of God, one of the early recordings, so I really didn't have much commentary. Mostly, it was I was just reading, which is really bad. Plus, I can't read from in front of me like the professionals do. I have to read from paper, so I'm looking down, so it looks bad. Um, so I, I'll try to add more commentary and also try to look more into the camera which is hard and also um, yeah, before even had trouble the camera stopping you know. also um, a question is what is the nature of God or the definition of God so I'm going to add a little bit about that first also these the, I have about a thousand proofs of the existence of God or the existence of anything prove anything exists uh, so but the first ones uh, like uh, for one to fifty were created a long time ago because they're you know so uh, with, uh, now now up to about a thousand but so I've come a long way since then uh, for example in the last four months I've read about well now it's um, January uh, 14, 2017. Uh, I think Olivia's daughter's birthday is in three days, January 17. I think she'll be 31. She just had a hit with her mother uh, called a song called Magic, the, the only mother-daughter hit on the dance chart. I saw it. I think uh, it's, a, it's, it's based on the movie Xanadu. Song Magic. I think the song was written by John Farrar. Anyway, um, so I'll, re I'll record a bit on the nature of God. Um, okay, these are books that again uh, have principles. Um, then afterwards, you have to convert it to, so you can record it on digital so you can put it on on the on, on the, the internet even on YouTube or something if you want um, okay, uh, what else? okay so again these are like okay so really in a way Heidegger is considered the greatest philosopher of the 20th century, him or the Wittgenstein. Uh, Heidegger has created a new ontology or the science of being. Uh, but really, Maimonides said that really uh, you cannot really have a science of being or discuss the nature of anything. Or you can't discuss the nature of God, for example, if you cannot prove his existence. Because otherwise, what you're discussing may not even exist. And can't actually uh, believe there was the things that existed, but he, he thought we could, did not, we could not know their nature. I thought Einstein, in a way, solved this problem, but in a way I don't think so, because I think Einstein only got to know the new mona. Although I might be able to extend his theory into the, uh, the actual pneumonal world by a similar use of the equation, distance is equal, uh, velocity is equal to distance over time, and using the known speed of light or electromagnetic waves for the pneumonia. But, uh, so I have about a thousand proofs of the existence of things, and then you can note their nature, so then this might be more important than 
a being of the end time, the, the, the book of Heidegger, which went to eight editions, where he discusses ontology, he was influenced by phenomenology of the Searle, and he is considered an existentialist like, like Sartre, and he considers uh, the nature of being. But again, uh, the question, still there's a question of problem of existence, that, uh, especially after Kant's critique of pure reason. Okay, so first of all, uh, I'll, I'll discuss the nature of God. There are many, many of them, or the attributes, which is important. Um, okay, so I'll try and go faster. Okay, so nature of God. Um, okay, so like I said, last four months or so, Okay, I knew uh, main, several pillars of philosophy. I guess mainly my specialty was more uh, Aristotle, Maimonides, Kant, and even science, Einstein, and um, also uh, Roddenberry, which created the science fiction masterpiece Star Trek and all its uh, over maybe 800 episodes now and 13 movies. And also uh, Jean, and also rock and roll created by Elvis Presley, and mostly my specialty is Olivia Newton John collection of, of um, in theory of emotion. So, but I, I know a lot. But what I did is something smart because I still have a lot of books to read, many intellectuals. But the last four months or so, I read a, a, a summary. I have a very good 2015 book on the, on philosophy, on a dictionary of philosophy, which has some articles also on major thinkers. And I read a summary of like about 50 major thinkers in philosophy. So some of them I, I knew, but some of them knew. So it helps confirm all my ideas and. So my, in a way, my head is spinning a bit because now I have to put it, I have to put it all into perspective. But I, I, the way it adds things a lot. I've created many summaries, and I'm still working on it. And I'll have to read more books, and helps me decide which books have priority to read next. But but helps me to to, to maybe to do this even better now. Um, for example, though, even like I'm one of my ideas was that you should use one sense to confirm another sense in knowledge, and I re I just found out that Husserl had the same idea maybe like a hundred years before me, because he well he was born before me, so but it's good to know that somebody agreed with me. Anyway, so here I'll try and go fast. These are like this. some attributes that maybe uh, attributes of God before I start the proofs of God. Like I said, I recorded the first 70 or so proofs of God, but they were dry, just reading with no commentary, so I'll do them again. Okay, so I'll do this again. I don't need, don't need my glasses because this is full reading. So, uh, super God, okay, so nature of our leader, well, obviously God will, will, should be our leader, and should be anyway. otherwise it wouldn't be God. Okay, so also see the Antimon section, I have, uh, Maimonides wrote many Antimonies of religion, I have another section of that, like over 500 now. Focus on Xanadu, so I call it the Xanadu God, uh, laws of the science of Xanadu theology, okay, the nature of God, okay, the definition of God, a lot of people said you cannot define God, but anyway, these are, okay, so what are the attributes of God, we need to know the nature of God and his behavior as he interacts in our world, but also to select the kind of proofs to see, to, to use to show that he exists or to see him, the universe is completely different whether one believes in God or not, we should consider that. Because I mean, obviously, if God if God exists, you have miracles. If, if God doesn't exist, then all you have is the blind laws of nature, and these are completely different worlds. So it is a question of paramount importance. There have been countless theories about God's nature. 
a creator in the history of humanity. Well, well some of them are really theories about nature. Even the theory of uh, Aristotle and then Ptolemy and then Newton and then revised by Einstein are really theories of nature. Even Spinoza is a theory of nature, really, in philosophy. The following, def the, follow the following extensive list of principles applied to what we call the Zanadu God. Zanadu was a term created by Coolidge to describe a place of idyllic beauty, and God is not God is not only the idyllic beauty, but also the creator of such a place. Must we prove all the following principles, or are they intuitive to some people? Because some people can, see, can, can are smarter and can see things more clearly. Okay, the song by Olivia Newton-John called Xanadu also inspired the name of God. Also, it's the theme song, theme song of that movie, Xanadu, 1980. Okay. I have a lot of notes already, uh, but this proofs of existence in general, of all kinds of existence, or more specifically the existence of God or paradise, may be my magnum opus, uh, my main work, because I use everything I've studied and collected proofs of God from all, from all, from, all, from philosophy, science, and uh, religion and science fiction, and the art and the music, etc. Art. Okay, so you know, look, if you look at um, most most people who pro publish systems, they have to publish one book. Look, look at Copelstone. He's, he's he wrote a famous history of philosophy. I think yeah, he, he wrote. Uh, nine volumes, which are divided into 22 parts, and Copleston published those nine volumes not in one time, but over a 30-year period. I think he published the first volume around uh, 1954 or something, and and the last volume was published around. 1974. So he, so he, because when you were in a professor, why well he was he was a father, he was a priest, I think. When you were in academic, there's pressure on you to publish. So you have to publish. So over like 30 years, from between, uh, he, he published book and volume after volume. The problem with that is that. When you publish the ninth volume, the first vo the first volume is already published, so I don't think he's, he was able to change it. Problem is, when when you do the ninth volume, you have much more knowledge, and it could affect the first volume, but it's too late; it's already published. Unless it can come up with another edition, which not, is not always possible. So. But here, I'm, in a way, I'm publishing um, a thousand proofs of existence of God after uh, I have like uh, many, many volumes of, of notes. So I can. Okay, so uh, I, can, um, I can modify uh, the first. Uh, a volume, a second, third, fourth, fifth, or well, the first proofs, or maybe like you know, these proofs would, a thousand proofs would appear dispersed, and maybe, maybe ten volumes, but they're collected together into one volume because they're the same theme. Cop Copperstone only organized his history of philosophy according to time, like, you know, dates. And thinkers that can start, you know, like started uh, around uh, pre-Socratics and then Aristotle, Plato, there, and then medieval age and later medieval age, Renaissance and modern time and all that. So, but I organized it according to proofs. It doesn't really matter if it came later or it's according. Well, it's actually according to that. The time that I discovered it, 
it's a time in my life, according to the time I discovered it, whether whether I found it somewhere or um, I created it myself or I modified it. Okay, so again, okay, so. Okay, uh, okay, so let's start the attributes of God. This is just a rough draft to help me think. Number one, the Zanadu God is the creator of the universe, of the world itself, of ideas of him, of him or of humanity, etc. The Zan number two, there is Zanadu God. Okay, I think from now on you just understand it's Zanadu God or Super God. There's no need to say it every time. Okay, God exists in a vast amount of space and exists in a vast instant of time. Number three, God is a necessary existent or the only necessary existent. Number four, God is the most perfect being, perfect in intellect, free will, power, kindness, appearance, life, etc. Number five, the Zanadu God is aware of what goes on in the universe. Six, God uses some form of energy to accomplish things in the universe. Seven, God is the king of the world i.e. the ruler and uses miracles to achieve his goals. He can intervene in the world as we do or he can suspend the laws of nature when necessary. Number eight, God evolves, evolves to a greater and greater perfection. Number nine, God is the cause of the world being sustained in existence. Number ten, God is linked to us. What does it mean to be part of something? At any rate, he is not separate from the world in, a, in the structural and functional senses. I think to be part of something means that you're linked together as cause and causes, uh, cause and effect. Or like in more recent times you have reciprocal causality like Coulomb's law of charge. 